Hello and welcome back to this next part in the series of videos where we talk about hosting your own media server and the best apps to enjoy it with on an Amazon Fire TV. And today we are looking at Jellyfin and Plex Media Server. Again, these are two very popular multimedia streaming tools that to help you enjoy the multimedia on your NAS. I've genuinely said the word multimedia too many times and I've totally lost track of the word. But um, in this video, we're going to be looking at these apps on an Amazon Fire TV. But before we go any further, I do think it's worth highlighting that there are other ways to enjoy it. For example, this is how it looks if you want to look at Plex on a NAS or via the desktop browser and Jellyfin via a desktop browser. Both of these we've got installed on different NAS systems on a slightly different IP each, just to make sure things run as smooth as possible. And occasionally we are gonna hark back to these pages, but the reason we're coming to them right now is we're probably going to confront with the earliest barriers a lot of users may have because they might be moving away from Plex, they might be looking at Jellyfin as an alternative for one main reason, and that is the cost. The cost of uh, Plex Media Server, if you want to enjoy it to its fullest extent, will cost you. It is completely free, and again, the application both for uh, most client devices uh, and if you want to enjoy it on Amazon Fire TV, is free but certain services such as hardware transcoding some of the trailer based stuff and more they require that plex pass and that's why a lot of users love jellyfin it is genuinely free now we will go into a little bit more detail about that but if you want to learn more we've done videos on this already and this article on the left hand side of the screen is linked in the description and it compares jellyfin with plex and mb and goes into a lot of detail about the things you can and the things you can't do what costs money what's not supported and on the subject of not supported this is our next thing we have to talk about and that is that jellyfin as you can see these are all different nas server applications and you can see that certain nas brands do not have a native jellyfin app now you can use you know a container based application such as docker or portana uh, to enjoy these alternatively you can go to third party app centers like the qnap club or sino community to download them but it gets progressively worse when you find out when looking at uh, finding these applications on client devices that there's a lot of gaps when it comes to jellyfin there are certain devices that do not have an app for jellyfin and unfortunately some of them when there is an appearance of an app they've had to charge because those platform providers actually charge jellyfin and other uh, app creators to host those files and the result is that they need to pass on that charge so whereas plex is largely free on anything and the devices that it isn't free on as long as you've got that plex pass already you will get it anyway included so definitely in terms of value for money if you're looking at spending as little as possible jellyfin is the solid choice early doors in terms of finance but when it comes to availability and ease of setup plex certainly takes a lead there now let's head back into um, the fire tv desktop here we've got that here in front of us and the first app we're going to look at is jellyfin we're going to go in there we've already loaded up here in the background and this is going to be my default setup using just a handful of test media. The graphical user interface is a little blocky, but it gives you all the information you want. Everything's laid out quite well. If we select uh, the matrix there, we can go in. We've got a bit of the description of the movie there, runtime, lots of metadata that's been scraped from the International Movie Database or uh, the TV um at imdb and uh, movies database.com um, and from there you've got all the usual stuff you can play trailers there if you choose although it will have to access them on youtube to get to them and of course you can favor watch them usual sort of thing you've got information on cast listings there and again you can go along sort of select an actor if you choose find out a bit more information about them and if they are on movies uh, in movies on your setup for example, if we go back one tier here and we go back to where we were earlier and select Reservoir Dogs and head in and find Quentin Tarantino, we'll be able to find, actually many of these actors are probably appropriate, but if we use Quentin Tarantino there, select him, we get his description and other movies that he's on inside this system. So it's a nice, slick, responsive user interface there when you're sort of cycling through Jellyfin. Now, if we go over this time to Plex and see how that compares, and go into Plex there. Plex, on the other hand, I would argue is the slightly slicker and a little bit, you know, glossier 
of the two as we get it loaded in there don't worry about the slight delay there that's because i already had mb loaded up and again if we go back to the main interface there what you see when you log into this system you'll log in select your account and that's what you see you see sort of most recently watched it will list movies and tv shows in the usual formats there and arguably it's using a little bit more of the graphical stuff there in the background to play with if we go into the matrix again we've got that description there at the top if we go and we've got the actors they've even listed musical tracks there that you can link to with other supported services again you will need a plex pass to take advantage of a lot of those um if we go ahead and go into the more options menu there you've got the watch together mode which is quite neat the idea that you can stream this and watch this with someone else arguably thanks to that plex pass account we've got access to a lot of bells and whistles but there's no guarantee you want to have access to all of those but still nonetheless i would say of the two user interfaces it's a little glossier here on plex media server but given the size of this screen that i'm dealing with here if i was sat on a 50 inch tv there is an argument that as small as this text might appear if you're looking at this on a phone if you were browsing this on say a 50 or 60 inch tv and you were going around browsing around on jellyfin there the size and scale of this text and these boxes are going to be massive now there is scalability if we go into the settings menu for both of these so now we'll look at how, what we can change up we can see straight away on the customization tone we go oh cool an app uh, to change uh, sorry the app theme but unfortunately there isn't a lot of options there there isn't too much to choose from and the options are really just light color changes at best now if we carry on down the line we can change some of the alignment the application uh, the um, folders that we see on uh, the initialization of the application there and again you've got different things there which review sites or what um, methodology you want for that which sections you want displayed on that home theme there is elements of reorganization there but not as much as I might like. And certainly when I do my video on MB, a lot of that will become clearer as well. But if we carry on and we look at how libraries individually look, so we go for the movies library there, you can change those image sizes, change the poster size, you know, have it in a little bit more of a, you know, raised fashion. There are, you know, ways and means to uh, kind of change and adapt this layout, which is to be desired. But still nonetheless, I've got to say on the overall presentation of that main layout, I think it's more appealing on Plex. Um, one thing I won't uh, agree with though, when we go into the settings menu of Plex and head back in and right the way down to the bottom of the settings, it just feels too PC based. There's a huge amount of customization, which I know a lot of users are gonna like. Look at that sheer scale of stuff that you can play around with. And if you know what you are doing, you're gonna have an absolute field day adapting and changing a lot of these options but bear in mind that some of them do still require a plex pass but inarguably there is just so many ways in which you can customize the plex server which really uh, the layout i should say of the plex client that are just not available on jellyfin which really surprised me now next up let's look at playback let's play a file and we're going to head back into uh, jellyfin there and play ourselves a file from the fire tv so let's go ahead and again we start till we finish let's go ahead into the matrix there let's go ahead and play the matrix and again i'm gonna have to mute this because of youtube being absolutely fun and games for this sort of stuff and from here we can have a little look at the options that are open to us so if we look at the bottom there what can we see first and foremost we've got chapterization options there at the bottom so we can skip forward as needed on top of that we have got the usage there at the bottom if we go down the fact that i keep pressing the bottom uh, the middle button to pause um, then we can change the playback speed if we choose on top of that this is where we can adapt some of the quality there the streaming quality there and again that will be bit rate related to it's not really resolution based but as we move one step along we can change some of the general shaping of the file there but really transcoding and managed transcoding doesn't extend too much beyond adapting that bit right there which in itself is really what a person should need the idea that it will reshape and reformat that file in a new bit rate if we scale it down to 15 megabits per second there again it's going to adapt that quality and playback there accordingly which is good but 
I kind of wish, and again, I, I'm sorry to feel like I'm putting the boot into Jellyfin here, because let's face it, they are the free application by comparison. You know, overall, for a lot of users, they're going to be the preferred choice for those keen on a budget. But if we go into the matrix in Plex here, which again, premium applications, I would expect a lot of these services anyway. If you go ahead and play the matrix here and go through some of those options along the bottom, we can have a look about what some of these give us to play with there. So case in point, if we wish, we can go along, go into the options there, and we can change some of these playback settings. So again, we can change the picture quality, but this time we can change a lot of the resolution details if we choose, not just the bit right there. On top of that, we can, you know, the usual subtitle stuff we expected there, and we've got the changing of the format of the playback there within the screen. Uh, playback info, we can find a little bit more light information about the file we're playing, which is a real shame. I kind of hoped that uh, Jellyfin would have that whole stats for nerds thing that MB does, but unfortunately that's not here. Um, carrying on, we can look at some of the other options here at the bottom. And again, we've got that auto access to all the options we've seen, but all of them in their own little tab there. So overall, between the two of them, Plex is still the one that's got uh, the high level of customization in playback, at least within the playback window. I like Jellyfin, but there's no denying that the money that Plex has put into their user interface is pretty darn slick. Now, if we go back to those settings menus, let's dig a little deeper. Now, in Jellyfin, when we look at those playback options, when we're outside of the normal playback GUI, there's actually quite a lot to play with there. Everything from changing how files interact one after the other in sequential playback, as well as changing the media player from within the uh, Jellyfin preferred media player selection. On top of that, you can change a lot of those background options there and resize and reshape a lot of those things, which means that the, uh, the general accessible GUI isn't too bulky on that initial setup there. Digging down more, you can do a lot more uh, knocking around with the audio stuff that, although it's available in Plex, is one of those things that comes under Plex Pass. Indeed, uh, Jellyfin has a lot more customization under the hood there, but it's just a shame that a lot of it is hidden under the hood like, like this and not within traditional access and playback. Because I think a lot of the defaults on Jellyfin could stand to just be a little bit higher. Case in point, when we were talking about MB earlier on, if we go into MB here and log into a server, I'm just going to give you an example of what I mean and we'll cover this in more detail in a future video. But if we go into the matrix there and just go ahead and play it within MB, Ignore that thing with the trial, more on that next time. Another one of the big old downsides of MB there. Um, if we go into the settings menu there, not only have you got uh, a lot of this stuff sort of built in to the initial um, controls, but all of those options are built in to the native player when I'm playing a file. So I don't have to cycle back to the, the main beginning there in order to do it. I can change that bit right there. I can change a lot more of that information on the fly when I'm watching a file in a way that I couldn't as well on um, Jellyfin there, which was, you know, kind of surprising for me. And again, stats for nerds is stuff that I really like. I want to know when I'm uh, watching a file how it's being shaped and what I'm enjoying from it if I'm accessing remotely. Now, if we make our way back into Plex Media Server there, and we have a little look about some of those deeper options that we kind of skirted over earlier on when we we're looking at those settings menus, we can see that that level of control is still, arguably, there is more customization options than we saw on uh, Jellyfin there. Again, a very big surprise to me there. I kind of assumed Jellyfin would be the more customizable option, at least on the client. Now, let's be honest. If we go in, this is not the full story. Because if we move back into those desktop controls here, Jellyfin suddenly becomes a powerhouse of control. If you make our way into the dashboard, the level of controls and accessibility and things that we can adapt and change, and right, uh, you know, are ex exceedingly deep. And I'm not suggesting that you would have this level of depth control on the client application for all of your users, but some of these controls in the client application would be remarkably useful. And I'm just kind of surprised, and we've got all of those extra plugins and stuff that we can control and you know adapt a lot of the system, which is great, 
but it's just there's an absence of a lot of these features and plugins on that client application and I would have liked to have seen a lot of them there. Again, this comes down to you, the end user. Jellyfin is arguably one of the best open source free media player applications across most platforms. It really, really is. But it's, um, le it's um, lack of access on some platforms it's lack of an easy installation is going to put some users off. And for those of you that want like that nice slick kind of uh, Netflix level feeling about streaming your own multimedia, Plex is going to feel the better option. But do bear in mind that Plex Media Server is not free. It's initially free. And when you've got some users accessing remotely, they can have it free to a point. But what makes Plex at its best is behind paywalls and therefore if you're not prepared to pay that five dollars thirty dollars hundred dollars or lifetime membership um pricing you're gonna miss out and therefore you're gonna be using a hobbled version of plex jellyfin is great if you don't want to spend any money and you want to have an element of control on the server side and you're not that bothered about the client side but if you want a little bit of both and you want all of the features included Unfortunately, Plex is still the king for a lot of those things. But this has been comparing the Plex and Jellyfin app for Fire TV. Stay tuned for MB coming up soon. I know I've probably ruffled some feathers with this video. I know a lot of you are really, really keen on Jellyfin. I understand why. And I'm just looking at this as much as I can through the telescope of how it's managed on Fire TV from the comfort of your sofa. And I hope this has articulated my points well enough. Let me know what you think in the comments. My next video in this series is going to be on MB. We've already talked about DS Video, we've talked about Q Media, we've talked about a lot of these apps, but it's MB's turn and we're going to be comparing that, of course, against Plex. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great week and I will see you next time.